when it comes to truly unique musical icons, across the entire history of recorded music, there's none other that can stand alongside Mr. Don Vlitt, better known as Captain Beefheart. Whether it was due to his unparalleled vocal range, the wild music and lyrics that he had in his songs, or the sheer amount of influence and innovation that he's responsible for, he remains one of the true musical giants of the past century. Born in California in 1941, at a very young age he showed exceptional talents in the arts, excelling in reading, sculpture, and painting, and before he was 10 he was winning a wide variety of different artistic contests. In his teens he was offered scholarships all around the world to practice and get better at his art, though due to a number of reasons he declined, ultimately living his life out in California. Around the age of 13 his family moved out of Los Angeles, and this is where his love for music is said to have begun, as he plowed through everything from deep blues to new avant jazz sounds, and often managed to find different ways to meet local artists who were performing in the clubs. However, it was a chance meeting in high school that forever changed his life, as well as the entire world of music. Whilst attending high school, he found another student that was very interested in the Chicago style of blues and a wide range of other music, and over the next few years, Captain Beefheart would spend most of his afternoons hanging out with, talking, and listening to music with this strange young man named Frank Zappa. The pair soon began to create music together under the name of The Soots, and many of these early recordings would appear on later compilation albums. After high school, Beefheart briefly attended a junior college as well as trying a number of different odd jobs, but he soon returned home and began working on music formally with Zappa. During this time, he taught himself saxophone and harmonica and started playing in a lot of the small clubs in the area. After putting a band together, in 1967, Beefheart recorded and released his Safe as Milk album. And though the record label thought it was a complete disaster, most musicians thought quite differently of the record. And you can clearly hear the Beefheart influence on the song A Day in the Life, which was written by two of Beefheart's biggest supporters, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Over the next few months, Beefheart would reconfigure different parts of his backing band, now called the Magic Band, and the summer of 1969 brought what many see as not only his finest work, but one of the greatest albums ever recorded. Captain Beefheart's 1969 groundbreaking masterpiece, Trout Mask Replica. Working the world of blues and free jazz and a little bit of rock, the album sounds like nothing made before or since, and it blew the doors open for musical experimentation across all genres and has had a massive influence on everything from punk to jazz to rock, and you can even see traces of the Beefheart sound in disco. The 1970s saw Beefheart working in a number of different sounds and releasing amazing records, but due to the challenging nature of his music, he was eventually dropped from his label for a period and then his band dissolved. In 1985, Captain Beefheart retired from music and concentrated on his painting, and he was quickly hailed as one of the most impressive and unique painters on the planet. A decade later, the captain had to step aside from that as well, as complications from his multiple sclerosis began to take its toll, and in December of 2010, he passed away. However, to this day, the music of Captain Beefheart continues to be studied and dissected like that of no other musician in history, as the complexity, vision, and unquestionable quality of his sonic creations remain in a genre and a style all their own. And for this reason, you can easily see why there has never been and never will be anybody else like Captain Beefheart. Oh!